Hey, this is Cassie here today to talk to you about how to prospect on the LinkedIn platform. Let's dive in. First things first, um, in order to do the more robust prospecting that I'm going to show you today, you will need access to LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Um, typically, LinkedIn Sales Navigator is about $99 per month and can be purchased directly through LinkedIn. So once you have Navigator installed, it's pretty simple to find on your um, LinkedIn platform. So I just logged in here and you can see the icon in the top right. So let's click on that icon and it's going to open up the Navigator platform. Um, so I already have some information saved here, but there's really a couple areas that I'll start to review first. So within Navigator, you can target by individuals or leads or accounts or companies. So in this case, I really want to find individuals that I can prospect to. So I'm going to sort by lead filters. So we're just going to click on that. And you can see that now LinkedIn has opened up a ton of filters that I have the ability to sort through. I have found that LinkedIn really does provide one of the most robust sorting abilities. Um, so I did go ahead and open another save search here just to save us a few minutes, but how I typically like to start my sorting is with the um, connections, degree of connections. So on LinkedIn, we have first degrees. So those are individuals that we are already connected to second degrees are connected to our first degree connections and third degree connections we have no relationship to. In addition, you have group members, so you can target individuals who are members of certain groups. I have run quite a few first connection campaigns in the past. So typically first connection campaigns are great for reconnecting or uh, drumming up old business saying, hey, how are you? Just trying to re-engage in a conversation. Second and third degree campaigns are for building your network and finding new individuals. So today I really want to leverage LinkedIn to build um, agency partnership connections. So I'm looking at second degrees. The next way that I really like to cut down would be by geography. So let's just use that example really quick just to show you how vast um, the LinkedIn network really is. So if I do second degree connections just in the United States, let's say, you can see I automatically have 6 million results, which is way too many for one person to really sort through. So that's why I love to use these filters to really drill down. So jumping back into my pre-built, um, I was able to get this down to just over uh, 200 individuals. So how I did that, um, again, I'm looking to target agencies. So right off the bat, I'm looking to target marketing agencies. I'm not necessarily interested in talent or um, hiring or anything like that. So I sorted by industry. So I typed in marketing but you can see there are many, many industries that are available. So I would take some time to familiarize yourself. Um, you can also have the ability to include and exclude, which can be really helpful for kind of like your second pass. If you find that you're finding people who do not fit your target requirements, you can exclude. So let's say I don't wanna work with nonprofits, I'll just exclude them from my list. Okay, excellent. Um, job title is great for being extremely specific. So in my use case, I would like to work with, uh, business development managers, people who are trying to drum up new business. In this case, in my preview, I can see that I have a board member who has somehow fallen into my criteria, even though I was specific with my job title. So I'm going to use that exclusion feature again to exclude board members and let's see what happens. Excellent, I can see that that person was removed from my list. Um, within function, this is another way to kind of take large individuals out or add individuals in. Um, 
You can see their sales, which could be a good option for me as well. And again, removing anyone who might not be a good fit for who you're targeting can really just help refine. So you can see with those slight tweaks, my number did drop from about 240 to 222, which I'm totally fine with. Um, in this case, I do feel good about this list, but other things to show off would be um, current company, past company. If you have specific targets at like large corporations that you would like to go after, using current company is great. So you can find your way into large corporations and then drill down using titles and functions to find the departments that you specifically want to interact with. This is really important for when you want to create extremely specific messaging to say, hi, I know you work for XYZ. I love what you've done over the past five years. Can we have a conversation? Company headcount is also great. If you don't want to work with large corporations, you have the ability to sort down to work with smaller groups. Okay. Let's say I want to run with this list. I kind of check the previews. I can see that these individuals really are the types of people that I'd like to do business with. So I feel confident and want to save this search. At the top here, I can just opt in to save this search. And now I can see my search was saved and I'll receive weekly updates for new members that are added to this list. So it's a dynamic list that will always grow as new individuals fit these targets, which is fantastic. Now let's kind of go back to the square one of Navigator. And I'll show you where that saved list lives. Save searches. And you can see I have my business development list here. You have the ability to rename this list into a more of a nickname if that would be helpful for you. But you get a little bit of a preview of your targeting options. Um, other things that are kind of exciting here, you can see when new individuals are added, you have a preview of all of that. Um, but I want to show you now that you've built your audience, how do you actually market to them and have a successful campaign? So let's revisit that audience. All right, great. So in skimming, I can see that these four individuals at the top would be a good fit potentially for what I'm trying to do. Um, I can see that some have been in the role longer than others. So I might choose to just market to those first. So let's use that use case. I'm going to take the individuals with years of experience versus months of experience in their role. So I want to select and then save them to a list. So now I can visit my lead lists and see that they're saved there. Here's my lead list. And you have the ability to create multiple lists to kind of sort and filter as needed. Now I have my preview of my hot leads that I'd like to target. So I can see some data on these leads. So I can see out of these two leads that I've saved, only one of them is, seems to be very active on LinkedIn. Let's visit an individual. From here, I can message the individual, get a really good preview of their profile without actually having to leave the Navigator platform. I can choose to connect. I can add a note for myself internally or save this URL. If I'm doing any um, work in my CRM that I'd like to save this profile link, I have the ability to do that as well. So let's say I want to send a connection right away. I have the option to add a message if I want to, but in our studies, we found that you're actually more likely to get a connection response or acceptance if you do not send um, a message with your invitation. Okay, great, now my invite is out. And if I look at my activity, I can now see that on the outreach activity, my invitation was very recently sent. 
So I can add a note as well, just to kind of help me in my future follow-ups So say, I don't need to track the date the invite was sent because I'll be able to see it, but I'll say hot prospect or uh, partner op. Now this is my internal note, so I know why did I want to connect with this individual in the first place. So the benefit of having all of this in Sales Navigator is that the information is constantly going to be updated and stored in one place. You don't have to jump from CRM to spreadsheet to so on. You can do your prospecting right in the LinkedIn platform. If there's a conversion, a response, a meeting booked, sure, then take that information and bring it into the CRM, but you don't need to clog your CRM with unnecessary info. So let's say I want to really keep track of the conversations that I'm having. You can visit your messenger inbox and you actually have the ability to send your messages through Navigator, which can be considered separate than LinkedIn messaging. I do the majority of my messaging through actual LinkedIn. So it's my information isn't necessarily stored here, but again, the benefit is having everything in one place. So you just have a single source to log into handle your prospecting, let your conversations get to the point of conversion that you consider is now a sales or marketing qualified lead, and then bring them into your CRM or additional channels. So in sum, uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator has fantastic targeting options. You can create many different lead lists and save searches for all of the different types of individuals you may want to target. And then you can actually manage all of your communication, your notes, your updates in one single platform to the point of conversion. And then you can bring them into your additional um, campaigns. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions regarding LinkedIn prospecting or any other digital marketing activities, feel free to contact IMG. Thank you.